tired of dealing with vein disease? Have your symptoms gotten worse? Oh, these spider veins are ugly. My legs and ankles are always swollen. My legs are tired of standing all day. While some symptoms can be managed by lifestyle changes, other factors are out of your control. Get help from the experts at Vein Clinics of Hawaii. To learn more about your treatment options, call 427-5565 or visit veinclinicsofhawaii.com. Aloha, Hawaii. It's time for the Vein Clinics of Hawaii radio show. Their team's approach to diagnosing problems and developing solutions and treatment plans are beyond compare. So let's get started with your host of the show, Mike Buck, and medical director, Dr. Randall Juliff of the Vein Clinics of Hawaii. Okay, you know, I was really looking forward to this program for a number of reasons. First of all, as a patient, not just the uh, the host of the show, but I've had a procedure done a number of times called ultrasound. And I kind of look at it as, you know, uh, when the mechanic comes up to your engine, uh, back in the old days, you could see all of the parts. <laughs> but uh, not not so with us. And that's why today, uh, and this is, uh, you know, Vein Clinics of Hawaii show, uh, it, it it's going to be sort of a primer, a learning experience for a lot of us. Uh, even though I think I know everything, I, there are a few things I don't know. And so what we're calling this show is Ultrasound Diagnostics 101. It's like you're going to go to school today and learn about this thing called ultrasound, which to me is probably the most cutting-edge development in the treatment of vein disease ever. And uh, we're going to explain that, and you're going to meet uh, a a unbelievable technician who does this, and, and I've had his, his work done on my legs. But isn't it sort of interesting, uh, Dr. Uh, Julep, that when we first met, you explained to me that um, 25, 30 years ago, it was a rarity to see a ultrasound piece of equipment in a doctor's office, and now it's like the main tool in the box. Yeah, uh, you know, there's there's so many different uh, you know special medical specialties that use ultrasound in one way or another. I mean, you know, we use it very, very extensively because. Uh, it's such a good modality to evaluate uh, blood vessels in general, whether they're arteries or veins or whatever. But, um, you know, it, it has made our job a lot easier, uh, you know. But, yeah, you're right. Be- before 25, 30 years ago, uh, you know, ultrasound really wasn't being used much at all. And especially in the vein world, uh, we were we had real cumbersome kind of, you know, tests that we had to do to uh that didn't really even show exactly what was going yeah. on it was sort of implied information uh based on uh, you know pressures and volumes and etc yeah. um and in in and, and yeah. again it was it was cumbersome and difficult for the patient and difficult for the person doing it but uh then ultrasound came along and uh yeah i mean it just revolutionized everything and and also ultrasound you know over yeah. a relatively short period of time over you know 25 years yeah. the quality of the pictures that we're getting anymore is just it's fantastic well even even the equipment i, I want to tell you hippocrates we talked about this a few programs ago yeah. if, if one of these guys was able to leap forward you know back into the future and and walk into your office and not just see not just the ultrasound but everything yeah. that you do. Yeah. They say, "Holy, this is very unfair." Yeah, I mean, we had to do a lot more work than you guys have to. Do. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So talk to us about when, at what point in time, you incorporated this tool into your practice. Well, you know, I mean, we've always we've always used ultrasound, mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I think just in general, uh, over the course of my you know professional career, uh, when when I was in training. Uh, ultrasound was it was definitely there, and I mm-hmm. mean it was being used more and more. Uh, but uh, I, I, again, I think just the utilizing the improved technology year in year mm-hmm. in year out. But um, and, and not only for us, uh, you know, ultrasound is being used diagnostically in, in so many different yeah. situations, and and it doesn't it often doesn't need um, uh, you know a highly trained technician although for the stuff we do we mm, need yeah. a highly trained technician but uh, you know the other day we were talking about the use of ultrasound in the emergency room uh, and uh, you know to evaluate uh, trauma you mm-hmm. know and uh, you know th- this is the, the ultrasound machine can be used by uh, you know the physicians in the ER who are yeah. not necessarily trained in ultrasound yeah. but the uh, the machines have gotten so good, but it gives them the information that they need to figure out what they need to do immediately for a patient who's had, uh, you know, uh, a traumatic yeah. injury. I've explained it as being, um, it's like um, X-ray on steroids. 
Yeah. Because there's certain things that you just can't see in an X-ray, right? Right. And there's certain things that you can see with ultrasound that you'll never see in an X-ray. Yeah. 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 Okay. So first of all, you're going to introduce us to Mike in a minute, but then also I think that one of the first things we want to jump into, um, the different, uh, you know. We, we talk a lot on the program about veins and arteries, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of confusion about that, isn't there? What, yeah. they, what are those things? Well, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people use the term vein for, uh, for everything, for mm-hmm. every type of blood vessel. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people know yeah. the difference yeah. but have a kind of a vague understanding. But, you know, the basic difference is that arteries uh, carry blood from the heart to the body, mm-hmm. you know, all over the body. Um, and veins carry that blood back after you know the blood has been processed and the oxygen is taken out and all that sort of thing. Okay, so, okay. introduce me to Mike. Okay. Mike? This yep. is Mike. <laughs> okay. This is, this, is, this is a true Mike and Mike show. And yeah. actually, it's kind of neat, Mike, because um, since the last time you were on with us quite some time ago, I've been in for treatment a couple of times where you've examined me. And, and that was one of the first things that I wanted to do as a practitioner, as a technician, uh, obviously, learning the difference day one between an artery and a vein is important. Does it really jump out? Is it that easy for you as what you do to know this is an artery, this is a vein? Yeah. I mean, even though the arteries and veins are, are – a lot of them are right near each other, you are able to tell the difference pretty immediately just by glancing at them. There are a lot of differences, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah and, and But, I mean, I'm a lay guy, and you've shown me – which, which is which? It, they are different, very different. Yeah, they, uh, now, also, uh, let's let's what Doc was saying earlier, and you could expand on it a little bit. Um, this, the the arteries that are the blood that's coming out of your heart is going into these arteries and spraying through your whole through, through your whole system, right? Yeah. So yeah. your your heart's pumping the oxygenated blood out through the arteries, and then your, your arteries are delivering the oxygen. And the nutrients to all the different tissues of your body, then uh, arteries become capillaries eventually. And the capillaries um, is where the exchange of, of uh, nutrients uh, and, and waste products takes place. And then the capillaries become the veins. And the veins are where the, the, the waste products like carbon dioxide uh, get expelled. That, mm-hmm. The veins take the blood back to the uh, heart, then into the lungs, and then you exhale the waste products and then it goes back into the heart um again after it's oxygenated and then back into your uh, circulation yeah but but what i think is pretty cool is uh, as as the technician you can see it travels in a certain direction in other words down is uh, is the is the arteries up is the veins yeah that's the most obvious way to tell the difference except when the up isn't working so well yeah let's talk about that how do you see that well okay so um the arterial blood is pumping down. Mm-hmm. The, the directions yeah. are, are different. Um, but the arterial blood flow is, is pulsatile. Your heart's pumping it. It's, it's you know, got a rhythm to it mm-hmm. usually. Um, and uh, the venous flow is, is very phasic. There's, your heart's not doing all of the work in your mm-hmm. venous system. Um, it's, it's mainly your muscle contraction, like your calves, and your respiration that, that moves the blood along in your veins. Um, so if it's not... If that flow is not working too well, there's a number of different ways that we can tell. Um, you know, we, we look at the waveform characteristics. So as I'm doing the ultrasound, I, I, I take samples of the flow characteristics, and I'm able to see that um, in a waveform. And I can look at the waveform and tell, is there, is there a problem here? Is there, is there some sort of an obstruction Proximally to where I'm looking to, mm. like above, closer to the head, uh, as where I'm looking to, or further down, distally. So, just these characteristics of blood flow can tell me a whole lot. You know, I, I think the interesting part about arteries and veins is that even though they're both blood vessels, they are really very, very different. Mm-hmm. Not only in the way they look, but also in the construction, you know, the anatomy mm-hmm. of each one, and also the function. I mean, you know, our, like you were mentioning before, uh, the heart pumps, and it pumps blood through the arteries. So that's how that blood is yeah. propelled. Well, you know, th- the blood is not propelled back up mm-hmm. to the heart by the heart. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like we have a bunch of little hearts all over yeah, the, yeah. the peripheral of, yeah. a part of our body and it's, it's uh, pushing blood up. So it, it re- blood movement through veins yeah. relies on something completely different. And, uh, and, and Mike alluded to it before, 
and that is that it relies on two things. If if they're working normally, and that is those you know tiny little one way valves that mm-hmm. we have that keep the blood moving upward, and also muscle contraction. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know you said something earlier, and that was gang. I hope you get this. You go to uh, veinclinicsofhawaii.com dot com, and you you got other questions. By by all means, there's now a vehicle which you can get them, and we can get them out there. But what Mike said was interesting is because the heart is a throbbing pump, right? Yeah. And so it's actually, it's not a solid flow of blood. It's pulsing. You know, it is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, as it's going through your body, it's going boop, boop, you know, yeah. on its trail. Right. But but that's not the so coming the other direction. No, no. It's not, it's no not, the, same, not the same process yeah. because it's yeah. not that constant pump. But, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and Mike mentioned that it's a, it's a little more phasic. Well, mm-hmm. it's a, what he means by that is that it, it kind of ebbs and flows. Uh, depending on a bunch of different things, mm-hmm. uh, you know, our respiration and, you know, the position of our body, et cetera. Uh, but still, the main thing is, you know, having those one-way valves that are working and uh, and then also muscle contraction, especially in the lower leg. And we call that the calf muscle pump. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason we call it the calf muscle pump is because that's that basically that's the pump that that's the main mm. pump that makes you know blood flow through veins, especially in our legs. Uh, and what's happening there is that the calf muscle contracts when we're walking mm-hmm. and, and whatever you know doing whatever. Uh, calf muscle contracts and it compresses yeah. the vein. And so when that vein gets compressed, as you might imagine, the blood in that vein has to move somewhere. It's going yeah. to move either yeah, yeah. up or down. And if those one-way valves are intact then it's going to move upward in the direction that it should be moving back up toward the heart. Yeah, and it's pretty interesting. And, and Mike, I, I don't know if people understand at what point in time the first ultrasound diagnosis is required. I mean, if you come to Vain Clinics of Hawaii, you fill out a, 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 a you get your own little iPad that lasts you, and you fill out all of these things. Then it comes to you all to decide what's next. How important is it to get that early assessment in what you do of a new patient? Well, it's important for us to know what type of symptoms the patient is having. That way we can determine whether or not they they should have a venous ultrasound. Mm-hmm. Um, if the symptoms match up and we think, oh, there might be some sort of problem in the veins, then that's when we mm-hmm. will go and, and do mm-hmm. the diagnostic ultrasound. Yeah, and Doc, when you sit down with somebody mm-hmm. that's had that, how valuable is that in sort of trying to identify where this patient is in the in the stages of venous disease. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I mean, it helps us tremendously. Yeah. Um, the, uh, well, yeah, you know, the first question is when people come mm-hmm. in with symptoms uh, related to their legs, it could be a number of different things. You know, it could be either venous function or it could be arterial, a lack of normal arterial function, or it could be, you know, muscle, joint, bone kind of problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, you know, other things, n- nerve, nerve issues, et cetera. So, you know, our, f- our first question is, what is causing these patients' symptoms? Now, you know, most of our patients are pretty selected out already just mm-hmm. by, you know, hearing us talk about the symptoms of venous disease, et cetera. But, uh, you know, occasionally we have people come in uh, that, uh, we, you know, they don't really know and we don't really know until we do, you know, the proper evaluation. Yeah. So the first question is, is it vascular? Is it muscular? Is it neurologic? If it is vascular, then is it venous or is it arterial or is it lymphatic? We've talked about, uh, you know, lymphatic problems in the past too, uh, past also. But um, so the, the way that Mike looks at arteries and veins, because their function in their anatomy is very different, the way that he looks at it yeah. is very different. Yeah, that's and, right. I want to get stuck in, into that part of it. In, yeah. in the yeah. way that, uh, you know, the things that he's looking for on the ultrasound uh, are going to be very specific to, you know, what what are the things that cause abnormal vein function? Yeah. What are the things that cause yeah. arterial abnormal function? And how do we look at that with ultrasound? And Mike would probably yeah. be better to answer Yeah, that. and Mike, that being said, and I like that, at what point in time, because you made decisions on why you're doing this specific thing, why you're a technician with this specific application of it. So I'm, I'm guessing that uh, when you look at it, that you're, you're able to differentiate uh, the disease. I mean, is, for instance, do the same thing happens in the veins and the arteries? No, no. We look for completely different uh, things in the arteries mm-hmm. and the veins. Uh, with the veins, we're, we're usually looking for two different things. Um, we, we make sure that 
there's no blood clots inside of the veins. Um, and then we also check for something called venous insufficiency, and that is a disease of the valves, these one-way valves that mm. we've been talking about. When the one-way valves um, stop functioning the way that they're supposed to, the blood will fall backwards and, and you know it'll go the wrong way, and that's what causes these symptoms that, that patients present with most of the time. Yeah, and I've had that. You know, you, you will apply pressure uh, to it and then release it to see you know, to see how that happens. It, it must yeah. be, it actually must be pretty fascinating uh, when you, when you can, when you can be such a, a important part of the procedure. In other words, you know, your, your, your passion, what, just back up a little bit so people can understand why you decided to get into this specific application of ultrasound. Well, I, I uh, went to ultrasound school back in 2009 um, <laughs> and I just kind of gravitated toward the vascular portion, uh, everybody gets to specialize in their mm, own sure. modality. And, and I, I just preferred the vascular end uh, and the cardiac end as well. I do I do echocardiograms mm-hmm. as, as well. But um, I started working in uh, vein clinics and just really enjoyed um, that type of exam. And I, I also seem to be fairly good at it. Um, so that's just kind of where I, I, I stuck. Yeah. And... Um, uh, and that's where I am now. Yeah, and that's, Doc, why I asked you, because obviously staffing and, and, and deciding who's doing what is pretty important. When you, when you start comparing treatment options and places you're going to go to to be treated, having this knowledge of knowing that you got the best of the best in each, in, in each area of your clinic must be the reason why people keep flocking to you to get treated. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and it is so important. I mean, you know, doing an ultrasound, it's not like doing a chest X-ray uh, or even a CAT scan, something like that, where you know people stand in front of the X-ray machine, or they get, take a picture and you're out of there. Put, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's like, it is. It's yeah. li- literally like taking yeah. a picture. Yeah. Well, not so with ultrasound. Uh, and uh, you know, and and Mike, I think sort of described it well because he was sort of pushed in the direction of of finally finding you know you know venous ultrasound mm-hmm. and wanting to kind of specialize in that little niche. Um, and because not everybody can do it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, not, the, you know, you, you go to ultrasound, you, you, know, you learn how to do general ultrasound, then you kind of like, you know, gravitate yeah. toward the vascular part of it. Uh, and even those people who do general vascular ultrasound, they're not cut out possi- very possibly for venous insufficiency. It's a, whole, it's a whole different world. You know, you really have to be very meticulous. You have to be patient. You have yeah. to be. You have to yeah. have a real knowledge of you know vein function and vascular uh, you know topics, etc. Uh, and uh, yeah, it it takes a, a, a passion yeah. for it. It, it does, and, 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 that, I, and luckily Mike has that. Yeah, and Mike, that's why I wanted to ask you because obviously, um, almost all of us lay people, we know like I know my arteries. Um, I, I'm I'm thinking, do the same things attack each system? In other words, isn't there a different of what happens, you hear about plaque, and you hear about things in arteries that you don't hear about in veins. So it must be really sort of neat when you can, when you can specifically pinpoint not only this is a vein, but what's going wrong in this vein, and the same thing for an artery. So when you're doing the ultrasound, um, when I come in for my next one, are we really looking at mostly at my veins and, and then just arteries because they're there, or do you have to look at everything? Well, there are two different exams. If I'm checking the arteries, I'll only be looking at the arteries. Okay. Uh, very briefly, would I look at the veins during an arterial exam? And then, and then the same goes for the venous exams. I'll, I'll glance at the arteries, um, but I won't do any mm. any real measurements on them. And and during the venous studies, mm. um, like with you, what I'm looking for mm. primarily, other than blood clots, is just that venous insufficiency. And the way that I do that. Um, is we we talked about the calf muscle pump. So I kind of recreate that calf muscle pump, um, and I, I, I do something called an augmentation um, distally to where I'm looking at with the ultrasound probe, so closer to the feet than where I'm mm-hmm. looking at. And then I, I squeeze, and I recreate that calf muscle pump. I watch the venous flow as I'm squeezing, shoots up toward the heart, and then I wait to see if that blood is falling backwards. Now, if the valves are functioning properly... I won't see any blood falling backwards, mm-hmm. and it's very simple. And and if I don't good valves, yeah. And, and yeah. if the person <laughs> doesn't have properly functioning valves, then I'll watch the blood <laughs> fall backwards in real time, and I and I measure how long the blood is falling backwards for. Now these veins, they they have a lot of different valves, 
Um, like the Great Saphenous Vein, for example, uh, one of the veins that we work on most often has about 16 of these valves. Um, so any one of them could go out. Sometimes mm. it's one of them, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's all of them. Um, so I do have to check each segment very carefully mm. to see, you know, okay, is that valve working? Okay, this yeah. one might be working, but maybe the next one's not. Mm. Mike, Mike, describe how you know which direction the blood is flowing in. Yeah, I'm you, dying you, to know that. You, yeah. you mentioned yeah. that you, you, you squeeze the lower leg, and when you squeeze the lower leg, that makes the blood go up. How do you know it's going up, and then how do you know it's coming back down? So we, we use the Doppler effect to tell the direction of the blood flow. Doppler is the same thing that they use for you know the weather forecasts mm-hmm. and seeing the direction that the clouds are coming and going. Um, we, we use the sound waves. We shoot little pulses um, out of the ultrasound probe at the veins or at the blood mm-hmm. flow. And um, I'm able to see the direction that it's going, and it's represented on the ultrasound machine with color. Mm-hmm. So, blue- I like, by the way, as a patient, I love that. You've shown me it's so neat to be part of watching what's going on. And that's, well, pff, no wonder it hurts. Look what's happening in there. Yeah, 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 it's real interesting. And it's represented on the screen as either blue or red. Mm-hmm. Um, blue, usually we have representing the, the flow up toward the heart, where red would be the blood flowing backward toward the feet. And arterial blood flow is, you know, usually just all red. There's, you know, it's phasic, so it'll go forward and backward. So you see a little bit of both. But with the venous flow, you don't want to see a whole lot of retrograde flow. You don't want to see a whole lot of red as you're doing these exams. You want to only see the blue. Um, so if a valve is not functioning well, I'll, I'll squeeze the calf. I'll watch the blood go up toward the heart, blue. And then if I see red inside of the veins, and that shows me that the blood is going the opposite direction, and we, we take yeah. measurements of the time that it's falling backwards. Yeah, that, and, that's and really that's cool. What, yeah. yeah, and that's what is so amazing yeah. about the technology of the ultrasound machine, uh, because uh, you can visually see the blood yeah. going yeah. In, in the right direction or wrong direction. And then there's another component where, there, where there's actual waveforms mm-hmm. that we look at. Uh, that are that is also telling us which direction the the blood is moving, and yeah. uh, that's kind of how we get the exact timing of it. Uh, but uh, you know, in it, it all, it, like Mike said, it's all based on sound waves that are being uh, emitted into the tissue yeah. of whatever it is that we're looking at, and those sound waves are yeah. uh, bounced back, you know, from a structure back to the probe that is coming out of the ultrasound machine, and from that, a picture is generated. Yeah. Uh, that shows us not only you know static qualities of what's going on in that area that we're looking mm. at, but also functional uh, qualities with respect to blood flow and uh, other things. Yeah, and Mike, there's a question that I had, and that is that uh, every now and again, and you said this to me, oh, we're keeping an eye on this one. And then the doc will say, okay, well, you got this condition, and we're just going to keep an eye on it. I think what's fascinating to me is that you're going to, let's say when I come in the next time, you can refer back to what I was before. I mean, in my file, it shows, and then you can show me and the doc and you what's changed in that period of time. In that six months, this thing that was this big is now this big, and this thing that was not looking as it was a big problem is now a little bit better of a problem. So we need to we need to develop a treatment plan based on the difference. Yeah. Um, uh, so venous disease is a progressive disease, so it, it, meaning it does get worse with time. Um, so if if we do an ultrasound one year, and and we decided not to do treatments at that time, mm. then I could check again maybe a year later, mm. and I could watch to see how much the disease has progressed. I could compare the measurements that I had, the ultrasound that I had um, a year ago with the one that I'm doing now, and mm. I can see how much uh, it's progressing in that time. And then also, on the other side, I'm able to see the improvements as well. Um, So if a person comes in and they are positive for venous insufficiency and we treat their veins um, on their follow-up ultrasound exam, I'm able to look and see how much the the circulation has improved. I'm able to see, okay, that, you know, where blood was once falling backwards and pooling up into the calf uh, via these veins, and it's, it's now not, you know, now the blood is just going one direction as it should. So I'm able to really see the the benefits of these procedures. Yeah, uh, in and real Doc, time. let's talk about how valuable that is in the record keeping process and in the comparison, so that that a patient develops not just a treatment program but some sort of an idea when they're going to need something done. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah, well, th- that's our our main follow up. Uh, you know, we we've talked about follow up here, and I think uh, you know uh, follow up after we do procedures on people is such an important part of of what we should be doing to keep track of these patients because we didn't do it very well before, you know, in past years. And uh, I think it's uh, it's a definitely a mandatory part of treatment. So, uh, you know, we in, in so we do these periodic what we call surveillance ultrasounds, and and basically that's it. Mm-hmm. We're comparing, you know, where that patient is uh, now as compared to where he was uh, six months ago or three years ago or whatever. Uh, we uh, it's very important that we do like Mike mentioned an ultrasound immediately after we do procedures because I we have want a big to... question on that one yeah. and that, and that is because of what I've done normally you know when you go out the door in the past you were out the door yeah but you what you do is you have them come back in so that Mike you can get on it and say okay here's what we did the other day how's it holding up did we get it all? Is there more that needs to be done? What are, what are you looking at when I'm revisiting after my surgery? So there's there's a few different things I'm looking at. Um, a, was the procedure successful? Are mm-hmm. the veins that we treated closed? Um, are, are there any remaining veins that are causing any sort of issue that need to be worked on? Um, and then I'm also looking for other things like complications that could happen with any any procedure like blood clots. Um, just making sure that, that everything is looking good and the way that we we wanted to after these procedures are done yeah and doc that's pretty interesting because i do know that that's what sets a lot of places apart Mm -hmm. depending on not just the equipment you have but who's running it sure and 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 how their communication is with the doc and the technician yeah yeah uh yeah i mean we rely heavily on that to uh, you know follow people over time uh and, and like i said it's a it's a very necessary thing um, and, and then we make, uh, you know, we may, we may think we may, we may see minor things that are still, you know, a little, you know, uh, where the word might be uneasy about, but it, mm. it doesn't, it doesn't feel like we need to intervene immediately. Gotcha. We'll follow, we'll see that patient again in six months, or we find things, new things that do need to be addressed. Uh, and typically if we do that, then, uh, the patient has, you know, kind of minor procedures that may be added, uh, you know, over time, as opposed to, you know, not following that patient at all. They develop a lot, a lot of new problems, and then they're kind of back to square one with respect to gotcha. what they need. Um, but uh, so we, we've talked about uh, what we look for in on the ultrasound with veins, and, and again, that that is uh, completely based on what the normal function of veins are yep. uh, with respect to the valves and the flow and all that sort of stuff. Uh, then now we also look at our arteries, and because arterial function and flow patterns, et cetera, are completely different, you know, it's a whole set of other parameters that we're looking at with the ultrasound yep. machine. Is a whole different you know problem that we're looking at. You know, a lot of people will come in. And we're treating their veins, and they say uh, they make some comment about, uh, "Oh, you took care of that blockage in in our in my vein." Mm-hmm. Well, no, we didn't take care of a blockage in your vein. Mm-hmm. We took care of a problem related to you know valve failure, et cetera. Mm-hmm. However, in, in people uh, come to that because they have heard about blockages in blood uh, vessels, okay. yeah. and 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 that's what happens in arteri- uh, in arteries. Yeah. You know, you this you, is the plaque buildup. Yeah, here, you, you see, mentioned yeah, plaque sure. before, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, So, uh, Mike, why don't you describe, you know, when you're doing an arterial study, what are you looking for and how are you seeing uh, abnormalities? Yeah, how are they different? That's that's a great question. So um, during during the arterial exams, we there's a lot of different problems that can happen within the arteries. The most common is caused by plaque buildup. It's, It's a narrowing of the arteries. Uh, caused by by plaque building up inside of them. Um, so that's that's the first thing I'm kind of suspicious of when I go into these exams. Um, I look to see is there any visible plaque. Um, sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. And then what's what's more important during these studies um, when I'm determining whether or not there is any sort of obstruction caused by plaque is uh, is looking at these waveforms. So we sample the blood flow, um, and a waveform is produced. And uh, depending on the health of the artery, uh, the waveform could be, you know, completely normal. It could be triphasic. I can see that, it, you know, it, it's got these certain characteristics um, that we look for. Or is it abnormal? Um, if there is, like, a proximal obstruction, any sort of narrowing of the blood vessels above 
where I'm looking at, mm-hmm. then it'll affect the way that the blood is flowing, and that'll be represented on these waveforms. Um, and if there's any sort of obstruction distally, um, like further toward the feet than what I'm looking at, that'll also affect the way that the blood is flowing through these arteries. Um, and uh, the, I mean, the differences between a healthy artery and, a, and, a, and an unhealthy artery um, can be pretty minute. I mean, you, you have to look for these tiny mm. little oh, differences okay. in the in the arterial flow. And now a lot of times it's very obvious. Like sometimes I'll go in and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take a sample of a, s- a certain point of an artery and, and you'll see like, okay, this guy definitely has an obstruction going on proximally. So like we, mm. you know, we need to we need to you know figure out what it, what it is. Um, if if the problem is like exactly where I'm looking at, like if I'm looking at a, the spot uh, with the narrowing uh, caused by the plaque, then I I measure the velocity of the blood going through that area. Now, if you think about the arteries as like like a hose, and um, if you you know when you pinch a hose, the 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 water will start coming out of the hose faster. It's because you're you know, you're making the space that it needs to travel through smaller, therefore the velocity needs to be increased. So that's, that's the same sort of idea that that's happening inside of your arteries. If there is a narrowing, the blood will start going faster through there just to maintain, um, you know, the, the the right amount of blood flow going through. And, um, we can also take measurements on the velocities and that can tell us a whole lot about, uh, how bad this disease is. You know, and doc, one of the things I think is really neat. I, I said this earlier and you can explain it between the two of you, is that right now we're talking about Mike doing diagnostic stuff mm-hmm. to prepare for you to take a look at so you can do on treatment. But aren't there, and, and this does not mean that there is an ultrasound technician in your operating room every time you're operating. But there are times when that is the case, and it was with me. How does that help the doc in the, in, in, in the actual treatment i mean in the actual procedure to yeah. have that to have that technician able to give you a look at exactly what's going on as you work yeah I think that's fascinating well, well yeah well it's important because we have to be able to see where the veins are and the blood vessels are uh in order for us to do what we do with respect to you know get usually we're doing procedures where we have to access the vein meaning we have to get, get into in the yeah, vein yeah. And uh, it, it's it's not we're, not we're not doing that blindly. We're mm-hmm. using the ultrasound machine now. Uh, you know, we're using the ultrasound machine in a very limited fashion, and we're watching. You know, typically a needle that we're mm-hmm. you know using to uh, get, get into the yeah, vein, yeah. and then we pass a wire, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, we we use the ultrasound machine not only diagnostically. Uh, but also uh, we use it in nearly every case that we do. But it, it's a it's a much more limited fashion that we're using it. We're not looking at flow patterns or anything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, getting back to arteries, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about that. Um, and, Mike, maybe you can talk about uh, how you – can you visualize plaque just using the ultrasound? Yes, you can. Um, and and what, do you, what do you see, you know, if you're looking at an artery and you come up upon an area that is uh, has that, you know, plaque process going on, what are yeah, some of the things like? that you see on the ultrasound? So the arteries, um, <laughs> inside of the arteries, there's there's only supposed to be blood, right? And the blood is represented on ultrasound as, as black, um, meaning there's nothing within that, that vessel that's bouncing the sound off of. Um, now when, when there's plaque inside of the artery, you'll, you'll see echoes within, within the vessel. Um, and those echoes can vary in, uh, different shades of gray and white. Um, the, the whiter it is, the more calcified, the harder the plaque is, usually the longer it's been there. Um, the newer plaque, um, the plaque that hasn't been there quite as long will, will be a darker color. So you can see the plaque visually sometimes, um, you run across plaque that is, is very fresh. It's very soft, so there's not a whole lot of echoes, not a whole lot of mm-hmm. density to it. Um, the more dense the plaque is, the whiter it is. Um, so sometimes there's not a whole lot of density, and it'll be completely black, and it'll look just like the the liquid blood that's inside of it. So you have to rely solely on the Doppler measurements that I was talking about earlier to to look at the flow of blood to determine is is there a narrowing of blood flow at this segment. 
Yeah, that, and that's what, you know, ultrasound is so nice because uh, it we're able to visualize, uh, uh, you know, vascular structures in a couple of different ways. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was talking before about, uh, you know, taking a, a photograph or a chest X-ray or a CAT scan where, you know, it's sort of a static uh, picture of whatever it is that we're looking at. We can do something similar with the ultrasound machine. Uh, just like Mike was describing, where we we call it a grayscale kind of you know image, where we can see uh, you know the wall of the artery, and we can see especially uh, you know when people develop plaque, often there's calcium inside that plaque, and calcium lights up you know mm-hmm. you know wow. tre- tremendously on the ultrasound machine. So that's one of the signs that would, uh, that uh, Mike might be looking for for you know for, uh, to identify plaque and then you you can also see just general mm. thickening of the wall uh of the artery so you know often we can we can just visualize that uh, that plaque in an artery just by looking at it well then yeah. then we verify it uh by looking at those flow patterns that uh, Mike was describing and in in the the analogy of the hose is a good one because what we see what we're looking for is uh elevated velocity of the blood going through an area that is you know decreased in its diameter Mm -hmm. and that the the blood is going to increase in velocity it's kind of like holding your thumb over the end of a hose well i mean obviously and where that is i mean all of a sudden that pressure is dramatically increased well that, that, that n- not not ne- not necessarily the pressure it, it's the, the flow, flow. That's what yeah I meant, the, flow, the flow this you know so yeah, we yeah. we can yeah. we can measure yeah. the speed of blood going through that uh, you know little yeah. blocked area and that elevated velocity is what what confirms uh by ultrasound that yeah there is a significant blockage in that artery and uh you know then we decide whether something needs to be done about it or not okay here, here's what i like gang and and you can learn this because i it, it's fascinating like i said there's no such thing as a dumb question if you want something answered of course uh, uh mike talking about ultrasound today we are doing this but you can always go to veinclinicsofhawaii.com and click on the contact us button or info button and get your questions answered about this. Because I think, once again, and, and I'm, I'm totally fascinated about uh, one thing that, that wasn't on our sheet today, Mike, but I remember it. And that is um, when, as a patient, I'm lying there and you're doing your, you know, your treatment of me or my, my diagnostic. And there's, this, there's all of these neat sounds going on. There's these squishes of this and squishes of that. And I don't know if that's just for me to entertain me or if that's really going on in there. Um, isn't that, though, dramatic when you talked about a pressure point and when you're, when you're making things, you know, you, you apply the pressure and then you release it to, to look at whatever you're looking at. It makes a noise. Is it really a noise? So it's not the actual noise that's going on inside <laughs> of your, so. your vessels. Yeah. It's the machine's representation of, of the flow. Yeah. And you can learn, you know, the, the higher the velocity, the louder it'll be. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so the flow is represented in a few different ways. That, yeah. that grayscale image, or, you know, the, the color that, we're, that we were talking about earlier, where it's blue for one yeah. way, red for the other. Then it's also represented as a waveform, and, and also it's represented as a sound. Mm-hmm. So the sound can tell us a lot. It is part. Uh, it, it helps us in determining what's going on. Inside yeah, and, of it. and Doc, the reason I asked that is because I saw a show not too long ago, and I didn't have the chance to talk to you about it, where they were using an ultrasound on a pregnant lady, mm-hmm. and her husband was there, and they're looking at the baby and all of these things, and it, it just totally fascinating isn't it and yeah. and, and and it's making a boom boom you can hear the heart and sure. obviously that's for me but isn't that also another reason why when patients come to vein clinic of hawaii that they are part of the they're they're a contributing member of the procedure just by yeah. b- by being involved well, well i think yeah we we try to get the patient involved because uh you know n- not only is it fun for them yeah. but it's also uh it it just makes so much more sense mm-hmm. to them when we tell them, gee, this is what you have, yeah. and then especially when we tell them this is what we should do about it, it all kind of falls into mm. place. But, uh, you know, getting back to the sound thing, it, the sound, actually, the sound is not just to impress the patient. <laughs> the, the sound, Dang, yeah. You know, the yeah. sound is, is giving us further information. And I guess that's, uh, I don't think about it that much, but that's another, you know, fascinating thing about the ultrasound machine. 
I mean, we're we're looking at a real image. You know, that's one bit of information. Uh, we're looking at uh, you know flow velocities. Sometimes yeah. that's another bit of the information. We're looking at colors as yeah. they change, indicating blood going in one direction or another. And then a yeah. fourth bit of information, which is that which is how it sounds. Mm. And like Mike just said, if there's a blockage in the artery, that that uh, you know pulsation that we hear, the the uh, you know the the you know the sound goes up. The volume up. goes up, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, so that's just another way that we are able to confirm what we think that we're looking at. You know, so um, it, it's it's a multi-dimensional kind of apparatus that we use, and uh, it, it's fascinating. Mike, when you uh, when you are working with Doc in in the the in the operating room, um, every now and again, I do know that you either you'll pick something up, or in in, in your case, you'll ask for to take a look at something, but. I, I'm. I don't think a patient or some or a listener knows how how you rely on this, mm-hmm. on how important it is to have that technician that knows what he's or she's doing, oh, and, yeah. and and being able to be there as an another weapon in your quiver, in your sure. another tool for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, Mike is much better at looking at things and figuring out how to look at things than i am you know he, he's got a much yeah. better grasp of that yeah. and uh, yeah it's not it's not unusual at all for me to you know be maybe doing an ultrasound in, over the cor- in the in the course of doing a procedure and have a question about something and i go get mike and i say hey you know what 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 does this look like to you or uh you know how is this different from what you saw before mm-hmm. you know all those kind of things it's it's a tremendous benefit for the patient uh, but one other thing that I wanted to touch on is uh, deep venous thrombosis. I mean, we DVT. We, DVT. Yeah, yeah. we talk. We, we talk yeah. about that all the time, and uh, I think it would be good for Mike. I mean, that's another yeah. thing that we check for in everybody. Uh, and uh, maybe Mike, comment on what you look for when you uh, when you're you know when you have a concern that maybe somebody does have a DVT. What do you, what are the things that you see acutely? And then what do you see uh, and, and what do we look for over time? Because another thing that we do with respect to uh, following a patient over time are those mm-hmm. patients that come in with DVT mm-hmm. and we diagnose them initially, but then we like to follow them over time to see if, you know, is the DVT resolving, et cetera. So what, what do you look for, Mike? So first thing I look for uh, when I'm checking for DVT is, is, is the patient symptomatic? Do they have the, the telltale signs that they may have a blood clot, the swelling, the redness, the pain? Um, and then uh, in, while I'm doing the ultrasound, I'm looking at mainly whether or not the vein is compressible. So there, there's a couple things that I'll touch on. So is the vein compressible? Um, usually the veins are able to um, collapse completely when you apply some pressure on top of them, um, mm-hmm. unlike the arteries. So the veins are very elastic. There's not a whole lot of pressure in them. Not a solid, maybe, is a vein, an uh, artery, rather? Correct. Well, yeah. yeah, there's more pressure in an artery, and an artery mm-hmm. has that extra – it has a thicker uh, muscle layer mm-hmm. within it, within the walls. Um, the veins usually will collapse if you put pressure to them. If there's a blood clot inside of the vein, the vein will not collapse all the way because there's that blood clot within it, you know, preventing it to collapse all the way. So that's the most obvious way to tell if there is a blood clot. Um, and uh, then you can also see it visually without the compress- without compressing it. Um, you know, it'll, it'll be more gray inside of the vessels. Um, and depending on how, lo- how long the blood clot has been there, um, it'll, it'll have different shades of gray. Um, a lot of times it'll, you know, if it's very acute, if it just happened, it'll be more, more black. If it's been there for a longer time, it'll be denser, um, uh, and it'll appear more, more whiter or, or, a lighter shade of gray. Um, and, and another way that we check is we, we look at that venous flow again. So sometimes there's a blood clot in an area that we can't really see. So we have to rely on the flow of blood. Um, to tell us if there's any sort of obstruction within that vessel. So um, if if I'm looking at your your femoral vein, like in your thigh, um, and I and I think that there may be a blood clot further down, like toward your knee or toward your mm-hmm. feet, um, I'll be able to, to, to do another one of these augmentations where I squeeze the calf and I shoot that venous blood up 
Um, and I watch in the thigh at the femoral vein as I'm doing the augmentation. Now, if there's an obstruction somewhere in between where I'm looking at the thigh and where I'm squeezing, then that'll affect the flow of blood where I'm looking. So if oh. there's an obstruction, then I won't, I won't be able to see that blood shoot up um, within the vein. So that tells that's like you know, hinting at, to me that there might be some sort of obstruction somewhere between where I'm looking and where I'm squeezing. Are, are you sometimes as amazed as I was when Doc told me a while ago, but you see it, as how, as how big some of these clots can be and how much, how much of that space they take up? I mean, you know, they're not just like a little thing on your, on your hand that's clotted up because you, you, you got a needle poke. Uh, isn't aren't some of these things rather big? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I mean it, it varies. Uh, sometimes the clot will only be like you know ten percent occlusive. Uh, you know, you'll just see a little bit of clot lining that that vein wall, um, and then other times it'll be like just totally occluded, where <clears throat> there won't be any blood flow through the vein whatsoever. The vein will be dilated. They'll just be completely full of thrombus, and and then it can also be very long too. I mean, it could extend down your entire leg into your abdomen. That's amazing, Doc. You, we've talked about that, yeah. but interestingly enough. Mike, I don't think people know. We talk about valves all the time. Hmm. Do clots always stop or start at a valve? Uh, Go ahead. Well, yeah. uh, oftentimes they yeah. do. A lot of times that's where the clots originate. Is, is Can they be not near a valve? Yeah, it's yeah, absolutely. All by I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a few different things that can cause a DVT. Uh, one of them is uh, stasis. So if you're if you're sitting around for a long time, not moving around, that you're not pumping that calf muscle, then mm-hmm. the blood stays still. Kind of like when you cut yourself and the blood staying still on your skin, it'll coagulate, and and that can cause a blood clot. Um, injuries can cause a blood clot if you you know some people mm-hmm. are in a car accident, and that'll cause a DVT. Um, and, uh, then, you know, a history of a DVT is also another risk factor for having a blood clot. Um, once you have a DVT, a lot of times there will be just chronic, um, clots within that vein. That's not going to go away. And those, Mm -hmm. those red blood cells like to attach themselves to that, that old blood clots. And that, that can start a brand new, fresh blood clot at that point. You know, you see that a lot. Uh, we, not, un, not uncommonly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's true. I mean, once you've had a DVT, your risk for DVT goes up. Um, but, uh, you, you know, getting back to the valve issue, uh, you know, people who developed, D, developed DVT, uh, and is, if it's fairly extensive, obviously it's going to affect valves in one way or another. Um, and, and it's kind of interesting, you know, I mentioned that we, uh, we follow these, uh, when people come in with blood clots, we follow them over time and, and it's, uh, you know, we put, put them on blood thinners and then, uh, you know, we, uh, we follow them and the blood thinners are not meant to dissolve the clot because mm-hmm. that's not a medication that's going to dissolve the clot. There is medication out there mm-hmm. that will dissolve clots, but routine blood thinners do not. Uh, so we put patient on the blood on a blood thinner, so primarily so that the blood clot won't extend, you know, or oh, okay. yeah. so that it won't break loose and go to the lungs, etc. Um, but uh, you know, yeah, often often a blood clot will originate maybe in or you know in and around the a valve, uh, but invariably if there is a clot there present in the vein, it it will eventually mm. affect that valve to one extent or another. Uh, and it's kind of interesting, you know, we, pe- we put people on blood thinners and often, then the body kind of uh, works at degrading the clot and everybody does a little better, like, you know, a, a different kind of job on, on getting rid of clot. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes we see people come in with fairly extensive DVT and then we do an ultrasound in six months or whatever and the clot's gone. Uh, and sometimes we don't see any evidence of, you know, that DVT, but uh, other times, unfortunately, People come back, you know, a six months, a year later, and we can, you know, Mike can still see a little bit of that clot that isn't going to go away. I mean, it's it's there, it's fibrotic, and it's it's never probably going to go away. And when we do see that remnant of clot in the vein, unfortunately, that is that's the thing that's probably going to alter their normal valve function. So it's not uncommon for people to come in with blood clot and then uh, eventually then end up with venous insufficiency because of that. Gotcha. So here's another quickie. And that means that, you know, particularly like me, I'm a patient. So obviously I have a case file and a management. I'm in the system. So when I come in, 
uh, either for an emergency or a, a real problem or just a checkup. How, how often do you look where we were before you look about where we're going? Does that help? Yeah, always. I, I always look at, at previous studies um, uh, if if they're available. It, it can tell me a whole lot, and then I know you know a what am I looking out for? Like, is this problem that I saw last time still there? Has it gotten worse? Um, yeah, so it, it is very helpful. And, and well, no, no, wait, wait. What I'm getting at is, mm-hmm. let's say that somebody else did an ultrasound on me months ago, mm-hmm. and now you're the new guy for, you, for me. If if you're looking at your own work, is it more identifiable than if somebody else's work? Or when you have the trained eye that you do, do you just see what was there? It's it's uh, it's easier for me to look at past studies I've done because I know That's the way that I, I, mean. I yeah, yeah. that I do exams. I mean, do it exactly. Um, but but it still is very helpful to look at other people's studies mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. yeah, Doc. In other words, what I'm trying to get at, and by the way, if you've got a question, and and you're waiting for me or the doc or anybody that. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. You have to get involved. <laughs> VainClinicsOfHawaii.com. VainClinicsOfHawaii.com. And click on the Contact Us button, and you'll be able to do that. And, and I think that everybody has those kind of questions, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. You're keeping records on me, and, and you know, I, I need to know in advance, or I need to know down how, how quickly you, you, can you discuss the results of the test that Mike's done for me. Uh, well, all, immediately, really, yeah, yeah, if we yeah, have to, yeah. uh, and sometimes we do, mm. um, you know, it, it's not, uh, it, it's pretty common that, uh, you know, Mike will be doing, uh, a, an initial diagnostic ultrasound on somebody and he finds something that we didn't expect. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we talk on the telephone and decide what we're going to do about it. Uh, or we have a patient that we've treated and, uh, we find something that's, uh, you know, uh, again, a little different than what we would have anticipated. Uh, and we talk about, so yeah, I mean, there's constant communication between Mike and myself and the other providers in the office, uh, because it's, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's often, you know, urgent in information that we're going to act upon. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Mike, obviously at the end of the day, it must be very rewarding when you've been able to discover an anomaly or a problem and then go to the doc and say, Hey doc, look, look what we got here. Uh, this, this is something we got to take a look at. Yeah. I mean, it's really great when yeah. somebody comes in and they're describing a problem and like maybe they've had studies done in the past elsewhere and nobody can figure out exactly what's going on. And then you're able to identify what is probably causing this issue for that person. And it, it is very rewarding. Yeah, definitely. You know, another yeah. thing that we use the ultrasound or, or that the ultrasound machine is good for is implied information. You know, so even though uh, Mike can't see, you know, the the ultrasound machine is uh, best at looking at blood vessels, mm. you know, kind of from the groin down with respect to, you know, leg, you know, yeah. vascular structures, et cetera. Um, and uh, but sometimes we he, he can he can see uh, information that is in the leg that is implying a problem you know, more up, up higher. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we can, we see that with both arteries and veins. I mean, if we, if there's an arterial blockage, then the waveforms and the flow patterns, et cetera, are different in the arteries and the leg, even though Mm. the arteries and the legs may look perfectly normal. Uh, and the same thing for veins, there may be obstructive kind of things higher, uh, within the veins and the flow patterns and, uh, et cetera, that we look at with the ultrasound machine, uh, imply to us that there's a problem and then lead our, uh, further evaluation in the direction that it should go. Okay. We're going to flat run out of time, Mike, but the the last question of the day has got to be, um, how painful is this procedure? And everybody wants, Oh, is this going to hurt? Ultrasound? Uh, yeah, it, oh. it, yeah, it is so <laughs> non-hurt. Yeah, no, ultras- ultrasound, <laughs> I mean, it, it. I guess it varies yeah. person to person, but yeah. uh, generally it is not a painful exam. Yeah. It's non-invasive, mm. so there's no radiation, no needles, nothing mm. that you... That yeah. should cause any pain. I do. It's comp- cold. That, it's, that, that material. Well, <laughs> that we little, try. We try little, to be yeah, nice yeah, yeah, at Bain yeah. Clinics of Hawaii and use warmed up gel. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, so usually it's a pain free exam. Yeah, and by, and by the way, I think that's important, Doc. Because uh, and real real quickly, have you seen a an evolution it, since you've been a technician on the equipment getting better and better and more useful or easier or not necessarily easier but more meaningful to work with? Uh, since I've been a technologist, yes, um, I not a whole lot just. Uh, in the time that I have been, I mean, well, actually I have, I have seen a whole lot. They, there's doing a lot more three dimensional ultrasounds now, mainly in the cardiac arena. Um, but I mean, ultrasound is really just progressing 
pretty rapidly. And I mean, soon you're going to be able to do these things on your phones and just yep. get the same amount <laughs> yeah, of information, yeah. you know, on yeah. on that as you are on these big hunky machines. Yeah, but remember, if an, if attorney represents himself, he's got a bad client, right? <laughs> you know, you got to you got to go where the experience is. Mike, thanks so much yeah. for coming down and visiting with us today. Uh, if you want to know more about what goes on at Vane Clinics of Hawaii, get online and do it. VaneClinicsofHawaii.com. We got a question button for you. Ask you to come back again next time. And so you you have com- you have successfully completed, um, di- uh, you know, ultrasound diagnostics one hundred and one. Congratulations. We'll see you next time. Well, that's our program for today, and we certainly hope you enjoyed meeting us. Please come back next week for our next episode. And in the meanwhile, to learn more, please visit our interactive website, VaneClinicsOfHawaii.com. That's VaneClinicsOfHawaii.com.